what is happening with the Justin Herbert rookie card market? It is absolutely falling apart. What's up, everyone? TJ, the big sports guy here. Today, we are going to dive right in and look at the Optic Hollow rookie cards for Justin Herbert. The prices have absolutely tanked, and we're going to see what is behind that and what's driving the prices today. If you guys haven't done so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. I noticed recently that 86% of you watching this video have not subscribed to the channel. So if you could, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified every time I put out new content and new videos. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's video, the Justin Herbert Optic Hollow. I'm going to throw up some examples here, but this is my card from back on September 26th. I had one of these cards. It was raw. I sold it on eBay for $112.52. I did an auction, started it at $0.99, cents, and that is the price that it sold for. And then since then, these cards have absolutely plummeted, and it's crazy. I know they always say there's a dip in prices after the season and in the off season, and then when football starts back up, you'll typically see a little bit of a spike in price leading up to the season. This was September 26th, so it was right around the start of the year. This was after the season started, but around the start of the new year. So sold this for 112, and then after that, things absolutely went haywire, and they are going down, down, down. So let's look at some different examples. Okay, so boy, am I glad that I sold when I did because exactly two days later on September 28th, we have some really bizarre activity here and then it just kind of goes into free fall after that. So we've got one more raw card with a really good example. There's nice pictures. The person has the card outside of the uh, top loader and penny sleeve and it sold for $110 in a raw condition. Looks really nice. But then look at this other listing here, $46 for the same exact card. Now this one does have terrible pictures. You can't see that it's an optic hollow. If you click on the listing and you scroll to the back of the card, there is a picture of that. It does say prism on there. So we do know that it is the optic hollow. It is the exact same card. This one only sold for $46 on the exact same day that one sold for 110. And this is why there's so much volatility and timing is everything when it comes to the sports card market. And then in addition to these two sales, look at this one too, an SGC 10 for $127. So $110 raw all the way down to $46 raw. And then you get an SGC 10 at only 127. And we're gonna look at more examples here from like PSA and Beckett as well. But just think if you're trying to buy these cards raw and grade them and flip them for a profit, you cannot buy the card for 110 raw and then send it to SGC and get a 10, which is the best grade you can get and sell it for 127 and make money. That's impossible. Now, if you buy it for 46 and you get the SGC 10, yes, it is possible. And then we're gonna look at some other examples as well. But a lot of people do this in the hobby. They wanna buy raw cards, they wanna send them in and get them graded so that they can flip them and make money. But looking at these prices, I don't know how much more that that's gonna last. All right, so if you're keeping track, September 26th, we sold a raw card for $112. September 28th, so only two days later, there's a raw copy for 41 and there's an SGC uh, 10 for 127. Now we jump to October 1st, so again, only a couple days later, and we have a BGS 9 going for $70. So if a raw card is now at 41 and a BGS 9 is at 70, then the SGC 10 is at 127. It does seem like we have a little bit of a variety between raw, 9, and 10 but let's go ahead and keep looking at some more uh, listings here. All right, so now we fast forward 11 or 12 days to October 12th and 13th, and we've got another sale of a BGS9. This time the card is going for $56, so it has gone down another 20 something dollars from where it was in the 70s to now where it is in the 50s and then we also have a sale of a PSA 10 so these PSA 10s have always done you know 300 250 etc now it's down under $200 so you're in the $190 range now for a PSA 10 so let's go back once again September 26th I sold a raw copy of this card for $112 and now a PSA 10 is only doing $190. So by the time you buy that card on eBay for 112 and pay your taxes and your shipping, you're probably in it for about 120. You've got two-way shipping to PSA and back, regardless of how many cards you send, you've got to you know, pay for shipping each way. You have to pay for the grading on this specific card, which if I'm not mistaken, PSA's cheapest level is about 25 bucks. 
correct me if I'm wrong on that, but about $25 right now. So you're in it for $120, and then let's say that you pay $25 to grade it. You got a $145 plus the shipping both ways. Now you're going to list it for $190 on eBay again to sell it. Maybe you can sell it in person, but if not, you got to list it on eBay. The market is at $190 now, meaning that you then are going to only net so much after the fees, right? Because you got to deduct 13%. You got to pay to them. Also, you got to keep in mind the turnaround time. So if you send this card to PSA, and let's say it takes you two months to get it back, so that's 60 days, which I think last time I looked, it was like 45 business days turnaround time, which is actually going to be, what, is that closer to like three or four months probably? It's, it's going to be pushed out quite a ways. Uh, 45 business days to get it back. What's the market going to do in that time? Unless Justin Herbert starts to turn around his play and the Chargers go on run and he's playing unbelievable and they're winning a bunch of football games, this could actually go down even further. And so if that's the case, you know, are you going to make any money? Are you even going to break even by the time you get this thing back? I don't know. All right, so now we're getting toward the end of October and we're going to look at a couple more sales. So October 22nd, we now have a PSA 9 which a lot of people always argue that a PSA 9 is going to be better than a Beckett or a BGS 9, and it's only doing $46. So it's actually selling for less now than the $50 comp on the BGS 9. And then you do have a raw comp at 41, which means that the raw card is basically doing exactly the same as a PSA 9. So if you are someone that likes to buy raw cards and send them in for grading, now if you get a 9 instead of getting a 10, which we know is a very, very real possibility, is probably going to happen. If you get a 9 and you get the card back, you're going to lose money. So you're buying the card for 40, you send it in, you grade it, you pay all this money to try to get a 10 for, you know, 190 bucks you think you could sell it for, and now you get it back and it's only worth 45. So you've sunk all this extra money into it, and now you're going to lose that and you're going to have to eat, you know, 13% if you sell it on eBay or or you're just taking a loss on this card no matter what. And then to show you what the PSA 10 market has been doing in the last two weeks when you bought that card and sent it in and started grading, it's now down to 177. So it was at 190, it lost another 13 bucks. So for all these guys that wanna buy raw cards, send them into PSA and get them graded, and this is a great example of cards that people used to do it with. Over the last few years, big name rookie quarterbacks are, those are the thing, right? That's the hot commodity. That's what everyone wants to buy and sell. And so Justin Herbert is one of those guys. He's out of that 2020 class. It's pretty stacked, right? There's five great quarterbacks, but none of these guys have done anything. From 2017 to now, there haven't been any rookie quarterbacks that have come into the league that have shown that they can get to the Super Bowl, let alone win the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow got there and Brock Purdy got there, and that's it. And all these other guys like Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, they can't even get to the Super Bowl. Jordan Love, Tua, Jalen Hurts, these guys can get to the Super Bowl and have a good run, but then that's it. They run into the Chiefs. All roads lead through the Chiefs. So if you're someone that's buying and selling these rookie quarterbacks, what do you expect from this market? And this is why I've been preaching in some of my other videos. Prices have to go down. Prices are too high. There's too many quarterbacks. They're not all great. Patrick Mahomes is the one GOAT that we're seeing right now, and this is a perfect example of that right here. Everyone loves Justin Herbert. He's done nothing wrong. He's been a great quarterback. He's been a great teammate. He's been fairly healthy. He puts up decent numbers. The team doesn't win enough, though, and he is not going to win a Super Bowl anytime soon. Unless Harbaugh and Herbert can turn this team around and make a run, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. And if they don't do that, these sports cards have to go down. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. These cards are getting pummeled in the sports card market, and it's ridiculous. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Again, if you haven't done so, please like this. Drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And also subscribe to the page so that you get notified every time we drop a brand new video. Thanks, guys. Have a great day, and I will catch you next time.